gotten off stage and gone, I think that may be a worse comedian. <laughs> Woman's perspective? I hate him. I'm, uh... <laughs> Dear God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, bro! Imagine the smell! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to uh, episode 283 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm joined uh, by Rosie here. Hello. And uh, we also have Bobby on the floor. Now, today's a cold day, um, uh, so place your bets in the comment section now. When do you think Bobby just invades my lap? I'm feeling like a 15-minute mark is when she she uh, goes for it. That's what I'm thinking. So place your bets in the comment section. Uh, thank you also to uh, all the new Patreon supporters. We've had a, a bunch of new people join over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the most recent Patreon episode is really good. We go through the whole Nickelodeon, Dan Snyder, um, Miranda Cosgrove, uh, Jeanette McCurdy drama there. So that's uh, a lot of fun. Or oh, actually horrible, but <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> episode if you want to listen to it. A um, lot of fun for Dan. I don't know about the other people. Um, right, so we should probably get into uh, the most important thing in the world, and that is my tickets, loosebeers.com. The tour starts. The tour has started. You've, uh, Melbourne happened. Uh, I assume it was great. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's happening. We released the episode early for Patreon, so we haven't done the shows yet, but I'm excited for them. Looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, uh, you missed out. There's more Melbourne shows in the future, and there's a bunch of other shows as well, loosebeers.com, Geelong, and Ballarat are the next shows. Mm -hmm. Ballarat, Geelong I'm excited for. They've yeah. both sold a lot of tickets. Ballarat has gone from by far the worst selling, oh, no, we might have to cancel it show, yep. to now uh, it's sold more than Gold Coast. Now Gold Coast is the, is the worst selling of the <laughs> tour. I've actually decided something right here and right now. I've decided that, that there will be a winner and a loser of this tour. There will be a winner... And a loser of the Gap Year Tour. The winner of the tour will be the city that uh, has the most people in attendance. The most people who bought tickets will be the winner, declared winner of the tour. The loser will be whatever city has sold the least amount of tickets. And and this, this leaderboard is changing frequently, right? Because mm -hmm. it was looking like for sure Ballarat was going to be the loser with a, a, a whopping 15 tickets bumped down to zero because we cancelled it sold. But yeah. now, mate, Ballarat sold heaps. Are there going to be as many people in the audience as tickets sold? Almost certainly not. Absolutely oh. not. I've had several messages from people who have bought tickets. A guy from Sweden bought two. You oh, know? my God. Last night, a guy messaged me from America. He goes, hey, man, I bought one to Ballarat. Happy <laughs> to show you some support. So I've sold a lot of tickets to Ballarat. I don't know if a lot of people will be attending Ballarat. It'll be a, a mystery. It's a mystery show. Now, to all of those people who are thinking about buying tickets to shows they can't attend, great. Go for it. But let's focus our attention on Gold Coast, <laughs> who is currently the loser of the tour. So if Gold Coast, you don't want to lose this fucking tour, you better step it up. Right now, I think the winner is Melbourne, but it's close. Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, neck and neck, Okay. Step it up. Fuck, imagine if just out of nowhere, you know, we had a show in Hobart and they just go, we've got to win. Mm -hmm. And I do, do 10,000 tickets in Hobart. Impossible. I don't think there's 10,000 people there. There's a few hundred thousand mutants, but I don't know if there's 10,000 humans. Um, look, now it's time to get into the most important thing. Lucifer's.com, get your tickets. Uh, Andrew Tate has been wiped clean from social media. He's been, first he was banned from Facebook uh, and Instagram, Meta banned him from their platforms. Then he was banned from, uh, actually, Twitter was the, peop, uh, the platform that banned him first, like ages ago. Twitter banned him first for like doxing someone and sending people to his house. Oh my God. <laughs> Which I saw on Reddit. I didn't know about this. There was some guy, I don't, I don't know the, the story behind this or the beef or whatever. One guy called out Andrew Tate on Twitter. And then Andrew Tate just like says, oh, I'm going to fight you and offers him a contract and blah, 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 and let's, let's fight in real life. And then, uh, and then eventually it just escalated to Andrew Tate posting his address and sending people to his home and the guy apologizing. And then he got banned from Twitter for that, it seems. Um, so Twitter was the first platform to ban him. Uh, but then it was Facebook and then Instagram at the same time. Uh, then YouTube banned him. 
And now TikTok has banned Andrew Tate. So that's like, I mean, has anyone checked if he's on MySpace? You know, has anyone checked MSN Messenger, Omegle? Is he still there? What's another? Maybe he go on Truth Social, Donald Trump's platform. He could go on there. What other social media platforms are there? Vero. Has anyone checked Vero for Andrew Tate rants? you got to look out. What other platforms are there? Pinterest. Pinterest? Is he still on Pinterest? Has anybody checked Club Penguin? Is Club Penguin even around anymore? I don't know. If it is, get Andrew mm. Tate off it because you know he's on there. Someone ban him from Habbo Hotel right now. Is he on RuneScape? These are the questions that need to be answered. This man cannot have any type of accounts on anything with a chat log. Can we look into banning him from those uh, little in-flight chat systems where you can message people on a plane? You can message like seat 13B. Can we ban him from those? I think there's some of them on Qantas flights. I'm not saying flight ban the guy. I'm just saying like, Ban him from messaging people. Can we stop him from texting anyone? Sending a letter. Can we ban Andrew Tate from reading and writing? That's what I want to know because this man is so harmful. I don't want to see any symbols that res- that resemble words or thoughts out of this man ever. He's simply too dangerous. Can we sew his mouth shut? Remove his tongue? Perhaps lobotomize him. This is what needs to be done. What do you think about the ban? Deserved. Deserved? Why? What did he do? He told a few jokes. Okay, so there's a few videos of him beating the shit out of women. <laughs> all right? Okay, fine. So so maybe he's being investigated for sex trafficking. Cool. Who hasn't been? Have you seen the video of him saying that he only drinks sparkling water? That's funny. I say we let him get away with it. That's what everyone seems to be saying. Everyone who's upset over this ban. Nah, sometimes he says a few good points. You don't have to believe everything he says. Yeah, do you know how fucking amazing uh, Adolf Hitler's animal rights policies were? Like some of the, still to this day, some of the best in the world. Pretty sure he still killed a few people. Oh, wow. You're comparing Andrew Tate to Hitler? No, Hitler had hair. Um, look, my thoughts on it are this. All right, let's say you, you don't even disagree with the things that he said and you think it's all fine, you know? Let's say, for example, in a hypothetical universe, women are inherently lazy, which he said a few times, all right? Let's say that's true. Those are my thoughts. No, he's fucking, even, even, if, even if he was like... I, I, Put this out in a video this week, right? Even if he was preaching the, the, the word of Jesus Christ and he wasn't controversial, he wasn't swearing, the guy still has a multi-level marketing scheme and he promotes it on social media. That violates the terms of service of like every single website. You can't have multi-level marketing schemes and promote them. You know, it's like uh, OnlyFans girls uh, getting banned from Instagram for promoting their OnlyFans link. Like it's just not something that you can do It doesn't really matter that they're not posting their tits on Instagram. The point is they're linking to a service that violates the terms as well. So to me, the ban was fucking inevitable. Uh, And I'll get into like what I think about what he says and everything after this. But to me, I think the ban was fucking inevitable. It was always going to happen. And if it wasn't for, for the things that he said or the things that he does in real life, it would be for the way that he runs his business and the way that he makes money, which is by manipulating people with no money out of their money and then putting them in a position where the only way they can make their money back is by tricking the next guy into the system. That's what it was. You sign up for Hustlers University, it's $50 a month, and you're there to learn how to make money. Coincidentally, one of the only actually reliable ways that you can make money out of it is by getting other people to sign up to Hustlers University with your referral code and you get a cut of their membership. It's a multi-level marketing scheme. This shit violates like... Uh, guidelines on just about every social media website. They don't want that shit there. But let's say you put the multi-level marketing scheme away. Let's say, okay, let's say he wasn't even doing that. He was getting uh, and encouraging and giving people guides on how to create accounts and to download and re-upload old recycled videos of him talking 
uh, to kind of evade bands and to just put his face everywhere. And it worked. It's fucking genius. Like those two things combined just meant obviously, you know, literally hundreds of millions of dollars. The guy was making like $55 million a month, I think, maybe more, like 50, 50 million plus a year. Uh, and it was incredibly smart how he did it. He would get, obviously, you make money if you sign people up to my course, but also the best way to get people to sign up is to cut up and repost and re-upload old viral clips of me. And that's just basically ban evasion and also spam, right? You can't tell people to create fake accounts of people they do not represent on social media and just post so much stuff. Like, if I did that, I would get banned. Like if, I, if I told all of you guys to just constantly be downloading and, and cutting up and making Speedhead Sundays clips and flooding TikTok with it, flooding Instagram or YouTube with it, uh, all Lewis Spears content would just get banned because it's spam. Like, that's what that is. That's like flooding social media with the same recycled, re-uploaded content. So even if the guy was a saint and didn't say anything wrong, the MLM and then the spam would get him banned anyway. It's bad for social media in general, obviously, because it's for a while the only thing you could see was Andrew Tate. And I'm not particularly interested. Some of it made me laugh. A lot of it just made me like, oh, this guy's a fucking idiot and made me upset. And also for the social media platforms, did you know that half the population is female? Like if you have half your user base every day seeing this dude that they don't want to see and hearing all of this shit they don't want to hear, you know, it whether or not it violates terms, it's just like bad for the business. So of course he was going to get banned. Like if you log on the website every day and there's some guy going, oh, did you know that that, that you are, are a piece of shit? You're going to go, I don't think I want to use this website anymore. Although people do still use Twitter, so maybe that's wrong. Um, so yeah, to me, it's inevitable that he would have gotten banned even if you took out the shit that he said. But the shit that he said was just like, I mean, the guy's a bad guy, right? When I yeah. first saw him, he was very funny. Like he's very entertaining. And I think that's a, what a lot of his detractors kind of uh, ignore or deny. Like the guy's very funny. You can't, you can't get that level of attention by purely being sexist, right? You just can't. You have to also be entertaining. And I think... You know, like, that's what a lot of people kind of miss. And the problem with Andrew Tate, the reason why he has so many supporters, is the way algorithms work is what one person sees of him is not what the next person sees. So for a while, like a good, I would say three or four months, I only saw funny clips of him. And I didn't look into him because it's just TikTok. I'm scrolling. And I just thought he was a dude that, like, satirized, like, alpha rich bros. And I just started seeing, you know, the... The clip where he's like, oh, I only drink sparkling water because I'm rich. I'm like, oh, that's funny. And he goes, oh, I w another one where I would never give CPR to a man. I'm like, oh, that's funny because that's he's playing a character. That's ridiculous. Um, and I, But I didn't see any of the sexist stuff uh, for months. So my, my perception of the guy was like, oh, yeah, funny, ridiculous character. Mm -hmm. um, but then I started seeing all these people go, Andrew Tate's sexist and misogynist. I was like, no, he's not. And then I look into him and I was like, oh, this guy's a bad dude. You know? I think it's like, it's like this, right? Yes, a lot of the stuff that he was saying was satirical, but uh, a lot of the more lucid moments, it seemed like the only times he was being like genuinely serious was when he was talking about how much he hates women, you know? And there's like, there's clips of him going, oh, uh, you know, it was. I think it was like these clips that did it for me with him, where there was one where he was talking about how he doesn't like women his age. He's 35. And that's like a bit of a red flag to me. Like as a guy, I'm 28. I wouldn't, if I was single, I don't think I would go any, any younger than fucking 21. And even then that's like young. That would have to be a very mature 21 year old. If, if I look mm -hmm. at an 18 year old and I see a 16 year old, you know? I'm like, oh, you, you're not a, you're not a human yet. You know, like you haven't, you just finished school. So you haven't had the human adult experience yet. You know, I, I feel like I didn't properly mature like as an, and become an adult until I was like maybe 21, probably even mm. older, like 25. I was like, oh yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. Kind of, yeah. you know, 
Um, in in the sense that I, you know, I'd been fucked over this way, so I could avoid that the ne- it, the next time it happened. Like I think that's like mm-hmm. a big thing about being a young adult, and I'm talking like under twenty five. Is like you haven't really been like fucked over yet in a big way. Hopefully, uh, so it's hard for you to identify when that's going to happen. And basically, he's going, look, I like girls that are freshly 19, 18 because uh, they're easier for me to imprint on. And he was talking about how, like, women his age are like, oh, I know guys like you, you're like this, you're like that. And it's like, that's such a self-report of, like, if adult women your age are constantly telling you you're a horrible person, you're just like this other horrible person that I know, the problem is not, ah. Oh, Older women are stupid, angry whores. The problem is they know what the fuck you are. Like, you're the problem. Yeah. And an, an 18, 19 year old is not going to see that red flag because they're naive. And they're pro- probably all they'll see is the money and the, you know, the cool, the cool shit. And they'll, you know, be manipulated by you. Like, that's grooming. Like, I, I can leave my mm. imprint on a 19 year old. Like, bro, that's grooming. Um, so it was that one. And then it was like another one who was like, oh, I don't think you can be a realist and not be sexist. <laughs> it's like, okay. Which is just like, that. I, that's like the mask slipping a little bit of like, yeah, I do think women are inferior. And men and women are different for sure. Like mm-hmm. if if my house was burning down and a fire truck rolled up, I'd be like, please be men, you know? But that doesn't mean that they're less good at things. You know, I, I, have, I work with multiple women as in part of my my business i work with multiple men and women and you know everyone has their strengths and differences and it make i think it makes what i do better um and i think that uh yeah i just think that being a being a man is not what he was kind of preaching as as being a man was like oh if you want to be a man what you need to do is grab power and influence uh and status and money and then when you get it what you need to do is just uh, manipulate and take advantage of women who are starstruck by it. <laughs> and and look, you can do that. Like that's something that a lot of men do. It's something that a lot of like well-known people do. Like you know, I'm a well-known man. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. You know, I've seen uh, dudes that get like status. You know, like I'm I'm a fucking comedian with a lot of followers right but that's status you know and that's that's a that's a type of currency that we live in and you can absolutely take advantage of that and uh you know basically just fucking marvel like younger women who think that's like the coolest shit ever and kind of take advantage of their naivety and their starstruckness you can absolutely do that uh and just have sex with a lot of fucking women it's totally possible but what that does is that it's like an empty existence you know it's not it's not fulfilling like a lot of people think like yeah man what annoys me a lot like i'll post a photo with a girl and i don't i don't post my girlfriend a lot so a lot of people don't know that i have uh, a girl so sometimes i'll post a photo with a girl and you get all these comments from like young dudes going oh i bet you fucked her after the photo yeah and it's like, again, another egregious self-report, which is you saying, oh, that's what I would do if I had status. <laughs> it's, it's, I would just fuck every woman that I could. Um, and that's not what, it's not what being a man is. And it's not what, uh, you know, living like a fulfilled, successful life is either. When I was younger, you know, and single, like I kind of, I kind of did that a little bit, you know, like I was much younger. I was like nine. 19 or no i was 18 and uh yeah like i just i just started getting like this little bit of notoriety and and women started to become more more interested in me and i was like oh my god i didn't know what to do with it so you know i started like going out with a lot of, a lot of girls and not taking advantage of, of, of anyone of course but just like oh just being like marveled by this female attention and, and you know making what i thought was the most of it but it just ended it like at by the end of a few months of doing that, I was like, oh man, this is like a really empty experience, uh, and it and it's and it started to make make me dislike women because I wasn't engaging with them. Yeah, you know, like uh, you see a lot of this happens to a lot of women as well. Like women will, uh, you know, have like go on 
have like lots of one night stands and stuff uh, and or have heaps and heaps of relationships that don't work out and then they go oh all men are trash and it's like well maybe you're not very maybe you're not you know choosing the right people for you or engaging with men as people uh, and the common denominator is you and I started feeling feeling like that I was like oh man women are women are this and they only care about me because of my status but the I was using my only my status to attract women and I was like oh I've, you're gonna reap what you sow right so if you accrue all of this power and influence and money and status and then you start flexing it and flaunting it and only that to attract you know a quantity of women who are attracted to that then yeah you're going to start to dislike them because you're only going to see that from women, basically. Mm. And you're not going to engage with a woman for a while as a human being, as a person, and build like a relationship with that person. So then you're just going to see like this weird, shallow thing where not where not only are you using them for your bodies, but they're using you for your status. And then that's kind of shallow and empty for both parties. They leave going, oh, this guy just fucking used me for my body. You leave going, oh, this woman just used me for my status. And it makes men and women fucking hate each other. And it's empty and unfulfilling. Whereas building a life with a partner or trying to find someone or trying to improve yourself, finding someone and bettering each other together, that to me is like what a what a man or a woman should be, you know, is someone that, you know, improves themselves and then gives other people a bit of a leg up instead of just going, I've got all of this and you're using me for it. So I'm going to use you for your body. All women are whores. Oh, I'm sad and lonely. Cause that's the, the end path of all of these like alpha bro influencer guys. And you look at, you look at a guy like Andrew Tate and he's fucking, you know, putting on an act and uh, talking about how he's like this macho dude, but he's had to fucking flee to Romania to potentially escape charges. Uh, and he said, you know, he said 40% of the reason why he's moved is because of the relaxed sexual assault laws. And he said in other clips, in other contexts, about how he enjoys the benefits of police corruption there. So it's like, you know, put those two things together. Sometimes you've got to believe someone when they tell you what they are. And uh, I think he's just one of those blokes. It's like I said it in the video, you know, if, if uh, we're in Australia and one of your mates gets a lot of money... Uh, and they're single, and they move to Indonesia for or Bali. You're like, yeah, this guy likes young Asian girls and doesn't like cops. <laughs> you know, that guy might be moving for the age of consent there, not because he likes the scenery. You know, sometimes you just got to believe people uh, when they tell you who they are. Um, and and also, yeah, he is funny. You know, like that's also true. Like someone can be very entertaining and very funny and also, you know, when they're not being funny and entertaining, a fucking horrible cunt. It's not that crazy. And if you do like him, you know, and you are stepping up to defend the guy, just remember that he's also running a multi-level marketing scheme and he's just using you for your money and trying to take advantage of desperate people who hate their lives and have no money. He's not helping anybody. He's helping himself. What color is my Bugatti? I don't know, man. What color is yours? Why are you flexing another man's car? That shit is so fucking lame. Every time I go, what color is your Bugatti? I think it was funny when he said it, man. But you don't have a car, so it's sad. You know? Woman's perspective? I hate him. <laughs> That's another thing. If, you're, if you genuinely idolize this dude and you think he's cool, like women just think you're lame. You know? Like, the only thing more lame than, than being Andrew Tate is, like, being a fan of him. Like, for, from my perspective and from a woman's, I think. Yeah. I went through my, um, when he still had Instagram. Yeah. I, like, did that thing just to look and see, like, what men I followed followed him. Yeah. And I was just, like, I just looked and I was like, <clears throat> oh, that checks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah. then I unfollowed them. <laughs> really? All of them? Uh, one of them was actually my brother's best friend, so I have yet to talk to him about that. Yeah. I follow people that I disagree with a lot. I do that a lot. Um, Is it just to see, like, what they post? Yeah, to see what they post or... or um, It's usually more so politically is I'll follow people that I that I 
disagree with a lot, but are, but are well reasoned and informed. But also, yeah, like um, I remember bit of a different example but a lot of people were were really angry when trump had twitter and social media and you would get like i got messages going why are you following trump and it's like he's the fucking president of america like i'm gonna gonna follow the president you know i follow joe biden you Mm -hmm. know i'll follow whoever the fuck the president is because i want to know what's going on um but yeah i've i followed like uh lots of like horrible people i followed milo yiannopoulos because i wanted he was part of like the culture and the, and the discussion. And, and I think if Andrew Tate had Twitter, I probably would have followed him just to kind of keep up with what was happening. Like it's part of my job. Although I guess a lot of people who work in at Coles aren't really following Andrew Tate. Cause mm. <laughs> I wonder what's going on in the cultural zeitgeist, but a lot of people are. My favorite thing though, was um, a lot of people before he was banned was like, Oh, how do we deal with this? And I knew the ban was coming. So I was like, oh, I reckon it'll sort itself out. Um, but uh, a lot of people were like, Oh, we need to stop saying his name. Like people were treating him like Voldemort, which I thought was quite funny. You know, he who mm. shall not be named. That was a lot of the people that I follow. Yeah. Like a lot of the women that I follow or, or like their podcasts, they're like, do you guys want me to talk about it or should we just not even like say yeah. its name and give him the airtime? Yeah. It's kind of an impossible question. Uh, like if he wasn't banned, I think like not talking about him doesn't really do anything, but talking about him maybe makes it worse or gives him more fuel. I don't really know. Mm. I think, uh, I just thought, yeah, the, I think the ban makes total sense to me, even if you put aside the shit that he was uh, saying. And I think, you know, there's, I think that there's like every time a bunch of social media platforms like band together to ban one person, I, I almost always hate that because it, it looks like a concerted effort to silence someone, which a lot of the time it is. And I do think a lot of the time when platforms have done that, they've gotten it wrong. But I think in this case, it's like, yeah, I think it was pretty obvious that the dude was like very, very aggressively sexist and genuinely didn't, genuinely thought of women as inferior and kind of preached that. And it's like, I don't know, dude, we wouldn't have that if, if someone was preaching that about the races. So why, why are we having it with the genders? Um, but I think I think a, 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 the Andrew Tate, like him, I don't think he's even the problem. I think that the the actual problem is algorithms and how social media platforms they amplify uh, anger uh, and disagreement. Like that's because it's engagement, right? Like if you see an absurd clip of this guy saying something fucking ridiculous about women and you jump in the comment section and everyone's going, he's joking. No, he's serious. No, he's wrong. No, he's right. I hate chicks. Oh, what's wrong? What about your mum? Like if everyone's fucking arguing, the algorithm goes, oh, this is a hot piece of content that's going to keep people on the website longer. I'm going to show it to more people so that more people see it, so that more people spend more time, so that we make more money on ads. It's like the divisiveness is what fuels a lot of these social media algorithms. And I think that there will just be another Andrew Tate. Like there will. There'll be a female Andrew Tate. There'll be a male one. There'll be, you know, an Andrew Tate that talks about politics. There'll be one, you know, we've, we've seen them before. Like my biggest videos are stuff that, you know, incites a reaction encourages discourse and divisiveness. Like I do it in a funny way, in a comedy way that I don't think, you know, damages the way that many people kind of think or view a group of people. Um, But, you know, that's what works on social media. So I think that, you know, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they're all going to come and go, we stand against sexism and blah, blah, blah. And when, you know, they're going to act like the heroes in this situation. But the reality is they kind of, they create these personalities and encourage this type of behavior on social media uh, and the type of content that just divides people and makes people angry rather than kind of makes people discuss and find common ground. Like you see this, you know, on, on the other side of things, like there are like really, really uh, loud, angry feminist voices that are incredibly derogatory towards men and how they talk about men and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they get amplified heaps because, you know, men see it and argue in the comment section with women. And it's like, that's what a lot of these social media algorithms are. And that's, I think the real kind of villain in this scenario, well, I wouldn't say it's as, as bad as moving to a developing nation to take advantage of relaxed sexual assault laws and bribe police officers if you get in trouble. I wouldn't go that far. But, you know, in terms of like, how do we solve the problem of Andrew Tate? It's like, he, he's, 
you, there's going to be fucked up people that have bad views of groups or women or sexes or races, right? That's just going to happen. The real problem is how do we modify algorithms to stop fucking promoting content that makes you angry and ruins your day? Like That's what Facebook is. Like Facebook's own internal teams have identified the algorithm they built you know, favors stuff that makes people angry and upset and ruins their mood outside of Facebook too. Like there's studies done on this that like people who use Facebook or use Instagram and now I guess there's some coming out about TikTok as well. People who use these apps all the time uh, away from the apps in their personal life are like less happy, more stressed, more self-conscious. They've got more anxiety and it's like these uh, algorithms, This that's what's doing it. Like I, I didn't... I didn't think that, that sh- I, I might be wrong, but I don't think that shit was happening before social media. Like when we had the internet and when we had like video, like Newgrounds, YouTube, stuff like that. I don't think all of this shit was fucking happening uh, on such a wide scale. And I think it's all algorithms, not, you know, Andrew Tate. So that's that's my take on it anyway, is the, the guy's like, yeah, just quite obviously a, a fucking piece of shit. It's like, yeah, he can be funny and still be like a horrible cunt. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, people are like, oh, you know, sometimes he says things that are true. It's like, so does fucking everybody. Mm-hmm. Everyone says things that are true. You know, if I say the sky is blue, can I fucking beat a toddler with an extension lead? <laughs> oh, sometimes he spits facts, though. Um, What was that fucking half an hour on the bald thumb? Oh, what a waste of time. Anyway, guys, um, speaking of bald, manscaped.com, the best personal groomers in the game. How good was that segue? That How was good a was good that? segue. I would like a few comments appreciating the master at work. Uh, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0. I trimmed my beard with it uh, this morning. It's looking really nice because i got something very special coming up that I'll talk about in, in a little bit. But, um, yeah, man, uh, I don't know. It's good. They, it's good for your beard. I have another one for downstairs, so don't fucking come asking me if my if my beard's gonna smell like my dick. All right, no, that's your beard. <laughs> uh, Manscaped.com use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. The Lawnmower Four Point Oh, uh, the just the best shaver that I've ever used, and it's the only shaver that I use, and I don't see it getting better until they release the Five Point Oh, which I, I don't I don't think they're even working on. I don't know. Get it. All right, it's fucking good. They also have nose hair trimmers. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've used a nose hair trimmer. I think it's pretty good. There you go. <laughs> Use code Spears. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So we've got... Uh, I can't really... I don't know. I can't really talk too much about it because it's, it's an upcoming big video. But um, and you might have seen my Instagram. I posted I've been working with the Misfits on, on something very special. Uh, and it's, I, I'm very excited about it. It's going to be a very big video. Um, I'll tell you like some broad strokes about what we're doing. Basically, um, a lot of the, a lot of the misfits want to like, uh, try stand up and, uh, they, uh, they're working on a video where the misfits try stand up. <clears throat> so, uh, they came to me and they were like, oh, they obviously wanted my help with like the stand up aspect of it and, and learning it and doing it. And, and, uh, they're, they're really doing it properly as well. Like they're not, uh, they're not going, oh, can, you know, we just like learn about it or, or maybe like do a show or whatever. They're like, uh, like tonight I'm, uh, Fitz wanted to do it for real, like do some open mics, like actually start stand up how you're supposed to, instead of just like, you know, a lot of internet creators, if they, you know, they're so big, so they can sell tickets, but they can't perform or do a live show, but they do it anyway. You know, they still sell a thousand tickets. People will come and the show will fucking suck, right? That's not what these guys are doing. They're doing it properly. So tonight, actually, I'm taking, uh, Fizz was like, oh, I want to learn stand up. I've, I've written some stuff and I want to like, I want to try it properly. I want to do what comedians actually do. Uh, so I've organized like tonight, we're going to go to two gigs. We've got uh, a couple of three minute spots each at real, real beginner rooms, like real hell gigs um in melbourne and uh they some of the some of the rooms where i started it um so i'm really excited to do it and and i've been talking with them a lot about like you know best practices for writing and performing and things to to avoid and things to to do and not do and uh 
Man, it's gotten me really excited about stand up because my tour starts soon and, and seeing like uh just seeing the fear in their eyes reminds me of when I started of like how much fucking anxiety and excitement and, and fear and, and happiness that I felt when I was like thinking about starting and and then like writing some stuff and then booking stuff and then my first ever gigs so how scary they were. It's uh, really, really cool to kind of take someone else through that and hold their hand a little bit and help out. It's fucking awesome. Like, I love, I love stand-up so much, and it's, it's always cool, like, welcoming people into that world, especially people who, like, take it seriously, and they want to, like, do it, do it. Like, you know, like, like I said before, lots of people who are, like, who have names or can sell tickets will be like, oh, I want to do stand-up comedy, and they just fill a fucking theater and then go on with, like, a story. So when I was younger, this happened to me, and they got a slideshow up the back. It's like, yeah, that's kind of not really what stand-up is, but to to see, like, these people who are, like, fucking so, like, famous, famous. Like, I'm I'm relatively big online. These guys are, like, next fucking level. Um, and uh, it's just really cool to see them, like, you know, humble themselves and go to an open mic. Uh, so I've I'm taken Fitz to this one. We've already done it by the time you listen to this, but I'm taking him down to uh, this one room in uh, Collingwood, and it's a sign-up room. And a sign-up room is where, like, you start. Like, this is the the very, very bottom of stand-up. And a sign-up room is the show might start at 7.30. you got to get there at 5 p.m. to put your name in a hat. And you write your name down on a list, and everyone's name goes into a hat. And there might be 40 or 50 names in that hat, and there's going to be about 15 to 20 spots on the night. you got to get there two hours beforehand, and then they draw your name out of the hat, and most people do not get on. <laughs> and then you go home. If you don't get on, you go home. I did that so... My first two months of stand-up was like going and then going, fuck, and going home. And then going there and going, fuck, and going home. Going there and getting one spot, going, yes, and then bombing and going, fuck, and then going home. So we're doing one of those. <clears throat> I've secured some actual spots for us, which is good. I've pulled a few strings. But those rooms are particularly tough because there's never an audience ever there's never and what i mean by an audience is like people who are there to see comedy you are going to perform to the 30 people that did not get their name drawn out of the hat (laughs) and it's the fucking worst because they're sitting there going fuck i'm only here so that maybe at the end of the night he'll put me on the show for real next week this guy got a fucking spot that's bullshit he sucks Oh, why does this woman get a spot? She tells the same jokes every fucking night for three months. Get a new joke. And they don't want to hear you and they don't want to laugh. It's awful. Like, so many times I've done this particular room, gotten off stage and gone, I think that made me a worse comedian. Because <laughs> it was so fucking brutal. Like, you got there with your jokes that, you know, they might have worked last week. You do them at this room and everyone just stares at you like, you fucking piece of shit. (laughs) And you get off and you go, maybe I'm not funny at all. So it's real trial by fire from with Fitz here. After that, you know, I'm not a terrible person. I did organize this awful one on purpose because I think it'll be good for the video. Um, Like, like here's, here's how bad it is. I'm nervous. (laughs) Like I'm nervous for it. Because I'm going to be doing it as well. Here's why I'm nervous though. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh my God. Sorry, the microphone just fell off the thing. Um, here's why I'm nervous. I'm nervous because um, I have to do much better than him. You know, I yeah. have to. I'm the vet. I'm the one who brought him here. I'm the one who's showing him the ropes. And, and it's going to be on their channel. So I have to be so much better than him. Fuck, man, if he gets up there and he does well and I bomb, I might have to quit. I might have to go, you know what, guys? Delete that. Give me the, give me the SD card and I'll snap it. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's almost 95% likely that both of us are going to eat shit at this first one, which is very funny. The second one is a nicer one. The second one's like a uni bar, like little relaxed underground thing where everyone's kind of sitting on beanbags and watching comedy and they actually want to be there as actual punters that aren't comedians. So that one will be very fun. Um, 
but it'll be a shock for the audience because it's it's going to be like back to back two of the biggest cunts they've ever seen not like like literally height wise like me and Fitz are <laughs> yeah. almost the same height I'm a little bit taller than him uh, but he's still he's going to be six seven six for six he's fucking he massive. is very tall yeah um so that's gonna be fun. We're filming those as well. I'm I'm gonna be doing a video of my perspective of this whole process, but there'll be a, a much bigger, longer video on them. Um, and anyway, <clears throat> in a couple of weeks, uh, it's sold out now. You can't come. I told you my shit sells out quick. Um, there's gonna be at the comic stands. There's gonna be like a misfits versus comedians, uh, like actual live show where the the misfits are gonna be kind of putting together what they've learned. With the comedians, I'm not going to spoil the, the format of the show too much, but the comedians will also be there performing, uh, and so will the Misfits. So I think it's going to be a fucking sick show um, to see. And that that's all going to be filmed as well, and it'll make it into their video too. And I, I just I just think it's like a really cool video. And they were talking about it. I, I went to the office, Rosie and I, just to kind of like give the boys and Toby a, a pep talk um, and you know, field any questions they might have and, you know, alleviate their many concerns. Um, and and Fitz goes, man, they're all talking about how nervous they are. He goes, man, there's no wonder no one's ever done this video before. <clears throat> and uh, I don't think it's been done. Like, like YouTubers, like, going out there and doing stand-up in front of a real, like, paying audience and, and like, doing it properly like Fitz is doing, like, going to open mics because it's so scary. Mm. Um, yeah. And, you know, for me, like, starting stand-up was so scary, but it was also so exciting and exhilarating and amazing because I knew that I wanted to be here. Like, I knew that I wanted to be a, a stand-up comedian. I knew I wanted to be really good. Um, it's going to be so much fucking scarier for people who do not want to be comedians. <laughs> like, like, they don't have the reward waiting five years down the line of, like, one day I'll be good. They're like, oh, we just have to, like, do this for a video. That's terrifying. I don't really want to do it. I think like all week they've been like, a few of them have been like, yeah, I'll do it. No, I won't. Yeah, I will. No, I won't. Um, but yeah, there's going to be like one expert per Misfit member. So I've organized, um, I've been like kind of producing this video on the on the, on the the back end. So I organized myself, uh, Luke Kidgel, Frenchie, um, and there's going to be somebody else who isn't locked in yet. Uh, so yeah, I think it's going to be a fucking awesome video and uh it's gonna be a sick night um all right with that out of the way um it's time to <clears throat> do uh miscellaneous bit at the end guys uh podcast at losebeers.com is the email to send in your stories life advice uh questions uh whatever you have send it through we need some more emails we got a bunch last week but i always need more so if you have a story or a question for me you need some life advice you have a confession Send it through. Who knows? You know, if you think it sucks, send it anyway. It might be good. Podcast at loosebeers.com. Okay. All right. Where are we? What have we got? Hmm. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Here we go. From Chris. Hey, Lewis. I'm visiting Melbourne this December for just over a month. Anything specific I should do or check out? Also, do you plan to do any shows mid-December, late January? I'd love to catch one. I don't know about shows. I might have some, I might not. Probably not. December and January, I generally don't tour. In Melbourne, what do you do in Melbourne? Uh, go to the Comics Lounge. I would recommend that if you like mm -hmm. comedy. Uh, that's about it, man. I don't really do anything. What do you do in Melbourne, Rosie? You know better than me. I don't leave the house. Um, uh, a few good bars down that way. Uh, this is the problem with the Melbourne. Footy, There's too many things. Probably. To oh yeah, the footy. footy. Go um, see an AFL game. The AFL's not on like December, January. I think that's when the Big Bash League is. If you're into cricket, <laughs> oh, cricket, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> it's the Big Bash games are actually not too bad. They're kind of exciting. Um, low key things. Picnic at the Botanical Gardens. Done that a few times. It's nice. Probably just see like what events are on. Um, like there might be, yeah, comedians down or like artists down. Yeah, that's the problem There's with like, Melbourne. There's too many things to do. Like literally yeah. just go what's on in Melbourne this week and yeah. you'll see a bunch of stuff. We have like, heaps of bars. 
Uh, if January? you're a morning person, there's lots of like cool little cafes and shit like that. Oh yeah, Melbourne's the best for coffee. Yeah, definitely. we have awesome comic book stores as well. If you're a bit of a nerd like me, there's there's like a bunch of stuff, man. Mm. Just like Google your interests and you'll find something. Yeah, I think also like around January is when like the Moomba Festival is on. I believe. Oh yeah, there's that. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, there's a lot of like events and stuff always happening. Mm. So, well, there you go. There's your answer. Thanks, Rosie. Maybe you can answer this one as well. Okay. Uh, my foreskin has been fucked for about five years. Uh, I'm a male, so I'm not going to a, to a hospital. But when I was about 12, my foreskin <laughs> shrunk. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. my boyfriend. Yeah, this is, this is male, real so fucking I'm Andrew gonna... Tate behavior. <laughs> I'm a man. I don't go to a fucking hospital. That's gay. What, I'm going to let a male nurse touch my legs? What, am I gay? I'll just keep a woman locked in my basement against my will and use her fear to heal me back to full strength. Um, that is a real man problem. My dad did that once. He had this, like, he's a builder, and one day he came, I think he sat on a nail, and he had this fucked infection on his right ass cheek, and he just refused to go to the doctor or the hospital for months. And as a child, I, even I was like, what is dad doing? And he just ended up growing this fucked infected crater on his ass cheek. Ugh. And uh, he end, mom ended up forcing him to go to hospital because he was in so, so much pain. Uh, and uh, now he, he still has like this weird, like pebbled scar on his ass cheek. <laughs> and it was like decades ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah, every time Cam comes back with like an injury from like soccer or work, I'm like, oh my God, are you going to go to the doctor's like, no, why do I need to go to the doctors? I don't the want doctors, to pay for that. You know what? I I would recommend healthcare, but the last time I went, they they cut my skull in half and they're going to decapitate me. So you know, maybe I would be better just being intrinsically tired for the rest of my life. No, that's wrong. Look after yourself. All right, you get one body, one dick as well. I'm a male, so I'm not going to a fucking hospital. But when I was about twelve, my foreskin shrunk at the end. And I've not been able to see the tip of my penis for years. I'm pretty sure this is called phimosis, but I can't be certain. Um, what should I do? I'm uh <laughs> Dear God. I'm sorry. I just mean Are you a doctor, Lewis? <laughs> well, that's your fucking problem. Don't email me. Actually, you know what? He's lucky that he's emailed me because I'm uniquely qualified to answer this discussion. I had phimosis when I was a child. I think that's what it's called. I don't know what it's called. I had the same issue. My dick was too big for my foreskin when I was a little, like, toddler. And it got too tight around the end and I couldn't piss. And I had to get circumcised when I was, like, four or maybe older or younger. I don't really remember. All I remember is, like, dropping to my knees at the toilet trying to wee because it was too painful. Uh, and then well, it just stopped. So I would recommend sorting that out because uh, I haven't had any problems since and I'm 28 now uh, and it seems like an easy fix and I really, really feel like having what, what is essentially a fucking rubber band on the tip of your cock is probably bad for your dick health. So there you go. He has made the right decision. And there, and there you go, dear listener. You've learned something about me. TMI? Um, yeah, dude, please go to a fucking doctor. Like, if I was rolling around every day going, fuck, my cock hurts, I would go to the doctor. How's this? He goes, my foreskin shrunk at the end and I haven't been able to see the, the tip of my penis in years. And he goes in brackets, there's probably a whole block of cheddar down there. <laughs> Come on, bro. Imagine the smell. Dude. That's horrible. Can you fucking fix that? Go to a doctor. That hurts my dick. Just reading that. Oh, my God. Man. I'm literally crying. Was you can't do that to yourself. That's horrible. Can you guys look after yourselves? That's absolutely <laughs> fucked. My dick hurting. That sucks. Five years you've been dealing with this, man. <laughs> Fucking hell.
I mean, yeah, there's like, there's like not going to a doctor, oh, because oh, it'll get better. And then there's like, like your your dick doesn't fit inside its own skin for five years, and you're like, oh, I don't want a doctor to see it. That's gay. I have to show my dick to someone, dude. How are you? You can't. Surely you're not showing your dick to anyone now. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so fucking insane. <laughs> it's definitely a problem that you've made worse by not seeing a doctor. Yeah, man, it's gonna fall off. Like <laughs> this is the thing with, with that type of thing, like you're like, like either either you're gonna <laughs> have to get a doctor to give you like a circumcision, which is what happened to me, right? Or you're I mean, if you imagine this, right? Imagine if you just got a rubber band and and just twisted it around your dick and then just left it there for five years. The tip's gonna fall off, man. <laughs> like you the circulation's gonna stop. You're walking around with it with a dick that looks like it's wearing a fucking dunce hat that can't be taken off. You can't you can't be fucking walking around the house with a triangular cock, man. Going, what's that smell? Why is my dick hurt? It's not on. <laughs> For fuck's sake, go to the doctor. Get a female doctor if you have to. Of all the things to go, not go to a doctor for, it's... Fuck. Although at this point, I if I were him, I would just be... I, would, I wouldn't want to go to the doctor because I wouldn't want to have the why didn't you go to a doctor four years and, two, and, and ten months ago discussion. Yeah. You know, why didn't you, st- you come see me like two weeks after you noticed your dick disappear? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. I, I, I genuinely feel for this man because that's one of the only memories I have about when I had the issue when I was really young is just the fucking pain uh, when I tried to use the bathroom when I was a little toddler. Fuck, man. Get that shit sorted. Um... And yeah, dude, being circumcised isn't too bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it voluntarily, but you know, it's better than whatever the fuck yours is going to look like. Man. <laughs> um. Okay, I might do one more just to cleanse our palate. <laughs> yeah. Um. Here we go. All right, this girl is uh sent in like a bunch of questions and she's literally gone, oh, I know you're running low on email, so I decided to compile a list of random questions. This is good. You know, we might do one of these at the end of every every episode. She's got like five here. A nice little palate cleanser, all right? So forget about this man's dunce hat penis and let's let's go to this. Um, If you could change your height, would you and to what height? Um, I, no, I'm happy being this tall. I I will say that this is, I reckon, the maximum height you can be and live like a good life if you're not a basketball player. Basketball player, whatever, you can be like 7'1", that's great. This, for like a normal person, 6'8", stop, that's the limit. If I were any bigger than this... I'd probably pull it back to like six six, but I like being six foot eight because um, it's not that much taller than six foot six, but it is enough to walk in a room and humble the guy whose whole personality is being six foot six, and I enjoy that every time when there's when there's like the tall guy, and then I come in the room and I out tall them. I I really enjoy their their perception of who they are being shattered. As, as they just stop being the tall guy for the night. That I, I will always enjoy. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with my height. I like being like a big guy. Uh, I would like to change my weight. That's one big drawback of being this big is it's so, so difficult to put on weight and, and just as hard to maintain weight. Like, you know, a lot of people I see, they put on weight and then all they have to really do is like eat a little bit more than what they're used to and they'll just like kind of stay big. If I want to, if I put on weight 
I need to eat so much fucking food. And then to stay at that weight, I need to eat so much fucking food forever. So I always kind of yo-yo with my weight going up and down to like a healthy weight and then like a almost unhealthy low weight. So that's annoying. But I wouldn't change my height. How about you? Mm, I like being this high. How tall are you? Uh, oh, like five foot five. Yeah, I'd say about that. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind being small. I have a tall boyfriend, so. Yeah. I like that. But um, yeah, I was tall in primary school. And I was just like, oh, cool. And then I got to high school and I was like really short. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's kind of all right. Yeah, you wouldn't I wanna, think. I, yeah, I would change your height. I think it would be a lot better for the videos if you were like six foot two. Oh, yeah. Actually, for this job, you need to be tall. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird like <laughs> silent requirement to work for me. You kind of need to be six foot one to get a good angle on me for the vlog. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's true. Even, even like the tripods we use, like whenever we're, whenever we're setting up for the podcast, Rosie's stoked because she can see the camera. You know, because mm. I'm sitting down. She's like, fuck yeah, I can set everything up. When I do a standing shot, you know, she can set up the lights, but then to oh, put the yeah. tripod up to the correct height. I it's can't like, do it. You know, way taller than Rosie because the tripod height is like a little bit shorter than me. And then you put the camera on it and it's like, it's just like so. You know how hard it was to find, even find a tripod that went this high? They don't sell these anymore. It's the only one I have. If we break it, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I wouldn't change my height, but I would, I would make Rosie's variable. Like <laughs> when she leaves work, she shrinks, and when she steps <laughs> into the office, she becomes six foot one. That yeah. would be good yeah. for me, just purely convenient. Um, oh, that was good. I'm thinking less about um, choked penises. Um, <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for listening. We're going to continue on for the Patreon episode now. Uh, if you would like a snippet of it, here it is. Out now on Patreon. For the video of He's Better Than Me, that's a fucking disaster, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, the audience is essentially tricked <laughs> into going yeah. downstairs. So I'm like, write it down. So he pulls out this huge fucking notepad with the entire <laughs> script on it. And everyone who placed a, a bet on when Bobby would get on my lap, uh, you failed. She hasn't yet. She might get on me during the Patreon episode, but you got to pay for that to see that. Um, uh, grab tickets to my shows, lewspears.com. The tour has started. You are missing out on shows. They are selling out as we speak. So thank you very much to everyone who's bought tickets, everyone who is about to. Gap Year is officially on. I can't wait to see you and meet you afterwards. It's going to be awesome. I'm finally fucking back and I'm feeling like I'm going to be able to build up some some momentum and I won't have to stop for ages which is going to be so good so thank you I'll talk to you on Patreon and I'll talk to you next Sunday I hope you have a shit one bye bye